What's going on guys? iOS 18 is now available and here's everything that's new and important in terms of hidden features and cool things you can do on the latest version of iOS 18. And one of the massive improvements is the capability to be able to record while media is playing. Extremely useful whenever you have Apple CarPlay enabled and you hit record. It doesn't automatically pause your music or whatever third party app you're listening to. It will still resume while you continue recording. And the same will work if you're listening to music on your iPhone in general, if I play this song, song right now, lower the audio, have it playing, and if I go to the camera app, volume, hit record, it still is playing the song as you can hear in the background. It even shows it right there in Control Center while we still continue recording. And if it doesn't work on your phone, you need to go into your iPhone settings real quick, scroll down to the camera section, in the recording sound section, make sure allow auto playback is enabled for it to work. The next cool thing about iOS 18 is the capability to fuel your music. So I'm gonna play this song once more, lower it for copyright purposes. And on some of these songs, there is haptic feedback support where you can fuel your music. The best method to enable this I found is to customize the control center by long holding, add control, and then search up music and you'll see in the hearing accessibility, music haptics, add it right there and then just simply enable it, enable it. You can play a sample right there, but now I'm actually feeling the song as it plays. It's really interesting and trippy, and you can also disable it from here as well if you see that little menu pop up while you're using Apple Music. And to ever see reply bubbles or see an Android user reaction, no longer need to be the blue bubble to be able to interact to one icon, just like so. To make sure your phone is compatible and set up properly, you need to go into your phone settings. In the main menu, scroll all the way to the very bottom and go in apps and look for the message app. Right here, click on it. And you'll like to scroll where it says text message RCS. Click on it, enable it. And most popular carriers like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and etc. they're all now pretty much compatible, at least here in the States. So by enabling this, you can now actually text your Android friend and you can mark them as red or not when they receive it. And they could reply with emojis and see what they said in real time. Just like iMessage. Now, another cool thing in the camera app is whenever you switch to video mode, when you hit record, notice we now have a pause resume icon to pause a recording without making a new clip. So you can pause it and then when the action is happening, simply tap record and it's one whole take instead of having multiple like recording clips. In terms of new wallpapers, if we lock our device and long hold, we did receive one new wallpaper and it has a hidden feature and that is iOS 18. These ones. The beauty about these wallpapers is they will change throughout the day. Sunrise to sunset, it just automatically transitions and this one will constantly continue changing and color shifting in real time. Another cool thing about here is these two icons, we now have the freedom to finally change them or delete them entirely. So if you don't want the camera app here, you just want to have a blank, you're okay, you don't need a flashlight, and then you're okay from like not using all the new other ones they added, like dark mode, home, TV, Apple TV remote control, and etc. Feel free to pause it right there, but there's quite a bit. Even have to tap to cache or pin your Apple Watch in case you misplace your Apple Watch. But the thing that a lot of people forget is you could actually run it blank, give you the best of the both worlds in terms of a clean user interface, because after all, you could always swipe to go and have quicker access to your camera instead of actually physically pressing down on that little toggle. Now the calculator app is probably one of the biggest overhaul apps that we got on iOS 18, because Apple introduced so many new features this thing can do nowadays. Because now whenever you enter like an equation as an example, it will actually save it right here in little notes. So you can have a lot of these in here where you could always go back and backtrack or continue where you last left off. But in addition to that, if you tap the calendar icon, you can switch between the classic one that we were always familiar when we go into landscape mode as an example. But if we switch back, you'll have math notes because you could do simple equations by just writing on the screen. You could do either a note style with a keyboard for algebra and such, or you could use marker and actually handwrite the equation. And as soon as I draw an equal sign, 
it'll solve the equation just like that and it uses machine learning to continue my handwriting as that four continues my handwriting style that's pretty awesome and you go back and go back to your recently mathematical notes you made or you can swipe to delete or share then another new app that was added on our iphone is the password app here's the password app it does require face id to unlock this is a new app, but it's extremely advanced because you have the capability to share your passwords with friends, family, or groups. As it tells you right here, like a quick walkthrough how to do that, it's super easy, but one of the best ones is the Wi-Fi section. By tapping on the Wi-Fi, you have the capability to show the Wi-Fi QR code to allow somebody else to quickly connect to that Wi-Fi without you having to give them the password. They just need to scan it off their phone and bam, they're connected to the internet. And then for groups, it's as easy as simply just going down here, name the group name, and then add your people, and then select the passwords and accounts you like to share with those other individuals. All free to use, no monthly subscription, kind of making third-party password apps like NordPass and such kind of obsolete now that Apple gave us this for free. Another app that got an improvement in terms of some unique hidden features is the Voice Memo app, where now it actually supports transcripts and you can save as additional files. So here's some past recordings I have, but if we record a fresh one, testing, one, two, three. Now I did pause for a little bit because I did some pre-editing stuff, but this is a recording that I just labeled test. I'm literally voice recording everything live in front of you guys to show you how, exactly how this works. So this little icon right here will actually transcribe everything. So it, it's literally transcribing live in front of us. Yes, there might be some errors here and there, but it's pretty darn accurate to the most part. And once you're satisfied, you could pause, tap done, a new icon will pop up after you wait a little bit. Confirm, letting us know that the transcript is ready for us. You can tap this little icon, view transcript, and it'll show it to you right here. You can have the ability to search or even long hold to like copy and paste it in your notes app. Ideal for like lectures and such. Then in the notes app, also receive a massive overhaul as now it supports audio transcripts, math notes, as I was showing you earlier, highlights, and collapsible section. The collapsible section, in my opinion, is probably one of the best ones. If we create a new note, I'm just gonna call this test. So here I added some uh, titles underneath to start forming that collapsible title I was showing you earlier. So to start it on the very top one, let's highlight it, tap the format, we're gonna select heading. And by doing that, if you look again, we do have a little drop down arrow so you can hide it or drop it down just like that. Another cool thing here, in case you missed it, we do have more color choices to highlight with. So now we have this new purple, this like very bright pink, mint, and of course the classic blue. Gave us more highlighters to shoot, to uh, play around with. Then in the clipboard section side of things, this is where you'll find the voice recorder, the audio recorder, record audio ability, which is exactly the same like I showed you recently. Just now it will actually save right here in our notes app. You could run transcripts. Now in terms of security, a forgotten one that a lot of people over, always overlook is now when you long hold on an app, we do have the ability to finally require Face ID to have access to it. So now you can actually lock your apps. When you first do that, you will get this message on your screen where you have the option to hide it or require Face ID or just require Face ID but still have it right here exposed in your home page. But if we select hide, it will create, well, I need Face ID to verify. I need to confirm that I want to hide it. It removes it from our home page. But if we look in our app library and scroll all the way to the very bottom, we now have this new hidden album place. And when you tap on here, confirm with Face ID, it will show the app that you have hidden and you can tap it on again, verify it to you and you'll have access to it. Now you have the ability to lock apps more securely than ever before. And then if you have an iPhone with a dynamic notch, the flashlight now has a cool animation than ever before where here you could, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's select it again, animation. And now you could increase the brightness or decrease it like so, depending on the iPhone you have. And you can also narrow it down to spotlight or widen it. Only available on iPhones with a dynamic island because this is an iPhone mini that I have right here and the flashlight is on and off and it doesn't really do anything. Only the dynamic notch has that ability. And then just tap here of course and tap one more time to turn it off. And not sure if you noticed but whenever you activate like the volume rocker 
There's now this new animation right here. Same goes for your power button. So Apple stuffily added that integration. Another cool thing in Control Center is powering off your device. You no longer have to memorize like a sheet code. If I lower the brightness a bit more, you could probably see it better. We now have a new toggle button right here where you could activate it with just a long holding. And it'll take you to your power off screen. Eliminating the need to actually memorize how to properly turn off your iPhone by doing the volume command with the power button. And then if you like to control your iPhone with just your eyes, long hold in control center, add control center action, and go all the way to the very bottom in the accessibility section side of things. In the motor accessibility, you'll see eye tracking. If you wanna control your iPhone with just by just looking at it, you can. You can just tap on it here, and it'll run through the whole setup procedure. You just need to be keeping your eyes in the screen to set it up and just follow these dots with your eyes utilizing face id and do this quick little test you could then just control your iphone by just simply looking on your screen best results is when you actually have when you actually have your phone directly like looking at it but that's pretty cool and then you can turn it off just like that another new one is motion sickness if you experience a lot of motion sickness just search up motion and you'll see a new vehicle motion by enabling this and having this on your uh, iPhone's control center, you can just activate motion sickness right here. We can allow it to automatically connect as soon as you connect to your CarPlay or just have it on in general in case you're on a boat or a plane and you experience a lot of motion sickness. It's to help you stay focused and prevent you from experiencing motion sickness symptoms as quickly as these balls will move upon the vehicle acceleration and deceleration. And of course, you can go back in control center and just turn it off from here. And lastly, if you have a dead iPhone, you know when you see the dead iPhone battery icon on the top left corner, it now will display the current time. Previously, we did not have this ability. It's kind of like the Apple Watch. But aside from that, there you guys have it. Those are all the cool hidden features and some cool tips and tricks I found on iOS 18. If you have some you'd like to share for everybody else, feel free to comment down below. But which one of these features is your personal favorite and which feature you like to see get added next on iOS 18. There's times where I have caught Apple developers watching my videos as some of the previous requested features have been added because of you guys in the comic section. Or who knows, maybe I'm the Apple developer. If you'd like to watch more, definitely check out this video over there where I go through all the cool changes and new things they added on Apple CarPlay and iOS 18. There are some cool things they added that I cover in that video in more detail. Thank you so much for watching.